The whole point of custom three-piece wheels is to get literally perfect fitment for your application. And the last thing you want to do, obviously, is drop a few thousand dollars on some fresh, built-to-order wheels, get that JDM weight of months and months out of the way, and then when they finally arrive, you go to test fit one just to find out that, dang, that smacks right into the brake caliper. So how do you avoid making this mistake? Well, in this video today, we are going to talk about the factors that affect brake clearance on multi-piece wheels. Monoblock guys, go elsewhere, but actually keep watching the video, honestly. The main one being disc type. We're gonna use the universal rule of thumb. There should always be at least three millimeters of clearance between the wheel and caliper in the tightest area. Some of you may not agree with this, but this is kind of generally what is accepted in the industry. These concepts can apply to monoblock wheels. However, the difference is that wheel manufacturers can switch out the lips or disc types on a multi-piece wheel to give you basically any desired width and offset. Whereas on a monoblock wheel, they are more cookie cutter based on the offset and width of the wheel, and that determines the brake clearance. Now, before we get into it, be sure to hit subscribe so we can keep bringing you this kind of informative content. It really helps us out. Please, whatever. Now, let's talk disc type. So what is disc type anyway? Let's start all the way back at the beginning here. It refers to the shape of the center disc or face of your three-piece wheels. These are critical to brake clearance, in particular, brake caliper to spoke clearance or caliper to face clearance. Before we get any further into this topic, this is a very visual intensive guide. We have a written guide up on our website and a lot of this information is fairly complicated and you may wanna come back to it a few different times to you know, kind of review specific portions of the topic. We're gonna to link that down below. So don't worry if you miss something in the video, just either rewatch that part or click the link down below and read the whole guide. The other issue when it comes to disc type could come into place when the top of the caliper contacts the barrel of the wheel. This happens when your wheels are too small in diameter, but more on this a little bit later. A high disc will give you the most brake clearance, while a low disc has less but offers a greater lip size. There are a few ways that wheel makers achieve this, but the most common is simply adding material to the back pad or changing the profile of the spokes. They obviously can combine the two as well. Again, fairly complicated topic here. First off, adding material to the back pad is effectively like adding a built-in spacer to the wheel. Apart from making the lug pockets deeper, as we can see in this photo that I'm sure my lovely editors will put behind me from SSR, the spokes remain the same. A side view of the same thing, we're looking at T-disc with the most clearance versus W-disc with the least, again, shows the difference here. Now, when it comes to spoke profile, this is another way to add a little bit of extra brake clearance, and this is done by changing the profile of the spokes on the wheel. Sometimes this means more concavity or less concavity, like we can see with these Advan GT wheels. Now, wheels with a convex spoke, think something like a Werkmeister or an SSR SP1, will have more of a curvature, example, basically more of a C shape to give increased clearance. Some wheels will feature more back pad and a different spoke profile to achieve a higher disc type. So, a higher disc is always better, right? Because you want more brake clearance. Well, no, not if you care about aesthetics. There's a proportional relationship between lip depth, disc type, and the final width and offset of your wheel. Lower disc equates to more visible lip. Higher disc equates to less visible lip. When you're browsing for wheels, as an example on our website, you can choose the disc type and offset among other specs. Most of the time, you won't be choosing the lip sizes as this is something that is dictated by width, offset, and disc type. The wheel manufacturer is effectively going to figure this out once you place your order. So if you want the largest possible lips like most do, you would go for the lowest possible disc type that still fits your brakes. Rear brakes almost always have more clearance. They're usually pretty tiny with the exception of a few oddball applications. So you'll typically see lower disc rear wheels and higher disc fronts. As an example, the most common combination we sell are work wheels with an A disc front and an O disc rear. If you're curious about how much disc type affects lip size, reach out to the wheel manufacturer. Every single one's different and they'll be able to tell you how much disc size changes the lip. Unfortunately, this is a bit esoteric and it's not something we can really document to be honest with you. Now, before busting out rulers and tape measures, the first thing you wanna do here is just hit up Google and see if anyone's run the exact same setup in the past. You'll need to find the same car with the same brake package and the same wheels that you want. For a lot of vehicles, like say an FRS, BRZ, whatever, this is super well documented. That is also a chance to wheel manufacture or your retailer of choice might have some useful insight and it's of course worth asking. You could also be dealing with a wheel and brake setup though that no one else is running. 
If this is your situation, what you'll have to do is get what's called a brake measurement template from the retailer or the manufacturer. The manufacturer will take that, they'll interpret what you got going on, they'll tell you what you need. Now, unless the wheel you're looking at has perfectly straight spokes, i.e. no curvature or convexity, it's difficult to 100% guarantee clearance on a custom brake setup, but we can get pretty darn close. Now, when looking at caliper to spoke clearance, it comes down to essentially how wide the calipers are. The caliper protrusion, also known as the X factor, also how far inboard or outboard they mount. And if you know nothing about the brake clearance for a given car, the rotors can give you some general insight. It turns out that rotors have an offset too. See, rotors with a higher offset, more backspacing, will have the calipers mounted more inboard, meaning more clearance. This is a nice rule of thumb if you know nothing about the platform. But to get some quantitative data, you will need some measurements. So let's talk about how to measure caliper protrusion. Now, if you are unlucky, you'll have to do this when you order three-piece wheels. It kind of sucks. Using a ruler and a straight edge, you can measure how far your calipers poke at past the rotor's mounting surface. If the wheels in question happen to have perfectly flat, straight up and down, no concave, no convex spokes, your work would be done for you. Neither wheels nor calipers are perfectly square. This is why it is hard to be 100% here. However, if you put in some okay a lot of work you could make a rough profile or shape of the brake caliper take as many measurements as you possibly can again when you have to do this you'll be provided a template from the manufacturer you can then double and triple check those measurements and once you have a rough drawing of the caliper with the dimensions you can compare this to the manufacturer's drawing or just submit it to the manufacturer and let them do the work which is what we recommend to see which disc type will fit over your brake calipers Again, due to the complex shapes, this is not going to be perfect, but at the very least, you should be in the general ballpark of what is going to fit, and manufacturers tend to be conservative because they want the wheels to fit your car. Now, worst case scenario, they don't fit. You can always run a five mil spacer. That sorts out like 99% of clearance issues unless you ordered like wildly, wildly wrong. Now, there is not a standard naming convention for disc type between wheel manufacturers. We're gonna talk about how some popular brands name their various disc types. This is not, always how it's gonna be, but we're talking work and SSR primarily. So work offers disc types from T to W, with T having the most brake clearance and W having the largest lip size. Not every wheel has a T or a W, but this is generally how it goes with them now. Originally, there were three disc types from work. There was O, A, and R, but since then they've added a bunch more as there are a bunch more brake sizes available now. SSR has disc sizes ranging from SL, super low disc with the largest lips, to HP, hyper disc with the most brake clearance. Running through them real quick in order, you have SL, super low disc, largest lips, NR, normal disc. This is the equivalent to works A disc, MD disc, extra brake clearance, HP disc, most brake clearance. Now, if we're taking a look at Advan, they are all over the place with their naming conventions. Depending on the model, here is what you might see. This also applies to some of Volk Racing's wheels, but again, as monoblocks, it's a little more complicated. Advan can call their wheels Low, C5, SL, or HP, MD, NR, C3, or MHI, High, or C1. So, there you go. What I would say, just order the wheels and we'll take care of it for you. Now, while we're on the topic of brake clearance, we are quickly going to mention caliper to wheel barrel clearance. If your wheels are too small, the calipers will hit the barrels. This is pretty obvious. And guess what? You can't solve this problem with a spacer. If you mess it up, the result is the same. The wheels won't fit. Again, though, the main difference is that you cannot space these out. You cannot do any kind of trickery. You can't shave your caliper down. They just don't fit. You're hitting marketplace. You're selling them. In general, for a certain brake package, there is a minimum wheel size. For example, a 370Z with Akabona brakes needs at least 18-inch diameter monoblock or 19-inch diameter multi-piece wheels. Even then, not all 18-inch wheels are going to work. For example, NKRPF1s 18.5 plus 15 are confirmed to fit, while 18-inch Z32 touring wheels are confirmed not to fit. Like caliper to face clearance, research is key to knowing if your wheels will clear or again, guys, just talk to us. Like that's what we're here for. This stuff's really complicated and it's what we do all day. All wheels have a drop center. This is the part that lets you mount a tire, but they can differ from manufacturer to manufacturer, wheel to wheel. So you would don't want to assume just because your buddy's running VSKFs on his Z that a set of VSMX are going to fit your Z. Now, step lip wheels have less barrel clearance. 18 inch step lip wheels will have the same clearance as a 17 inch reverse or flat lip wheel, unless you space the wheel out basically into the larger portion of the barrel. If they're double stepped, you guessed it an 18 inch double 
full step rim will have similar clearance to a 16 inch wheel. Now the good thing about barrel clearance is that it is super easy to measure and super linear. It is a yes and no binary answer. Essentially how to measure for barrel clearance, we are just going to take a measurement from the center of your vehicle's hub to the tallest point on the caliper or whatever else could possibly interfere. So think like ball joints are similar to that. The only real challenge is making sure you're measuring from the true center of the hub. You wanna verify your measurement a few times and you should be good to go. You also wanna measure the entire rotor diameter and then just basically find the midpoint and then remeasure it from there. With this measurement, the wheel manufacturer or the retailer, us, will be able to tell you if a wheel is a go or a no-go. And guys, when they say no, it's a no. Now, hopefully 15 years from now, we can just take a photo of our wheels and say, hey, Chad GPT will our disc fit my 350Z. But for now, we can't do that. So the old expression, measure twice, cut once, is kind of applicable here. But it's essentially more like measure 10 times, order once, wait for the manufacturer to tell you that what you thought you measured correctly is not measured correctly, and then give you the actual disc types for your wheels because that's how it works, right? Even then, it's not possible to be 100% accurate. However, the good thing is that as long as you land somewhere in the general ballpark, you'll be fine. Needing a 5 mil slip-on spacer is not the end of the world. You obviously want to avoid it. That's why you go with someone who's experienced in multi-piece wheels. However, on the flip side, if you blindly order the lowest disc type for maximum lip, you may end up with $4,000 paperweights. Don't worry if you order from us. We manually check every multi-piece wheel order. You're going to be good. Just buy the wheels you like, and then we'll help you on the back end. Now, before you get to measuring, there's always a chance someone has run the same wheels with the same brakes on the same vehicle and can confirm if they fit or not. The wheel manufacturer, forums, our vehicle gallery, and our customer service guys, or sales guys, depending on who you get in touch with, are great sources to check. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you want more information on multi-piece wheels like this, definitely drop a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.